Hello, how's it going everybody? So, today we're going to talk about Kodi, which is a media center application. In my previous video, I talked about Jellyfin, so I'll also go over some of the differences between Jellyfin and Kodi. So, Jellyfin is a media server. It's designed to be portable, and it has real-time transcoding, and it has direct streaming. So if you're not at home, it will actually transcode your video so because your connection probably won't be fast enough to direct stream but if it detects a fast enough connection it'll just direct stream to the client device so it uses a client server model as a media server opposed to Kodi which is a media center designed around the idea that you watch all your media on one tv and it does not have a transcoding feature one of the great things about Kodi this will run on cheap devices like a Raspberry Pi. Now you can either use Kodi as an alternative to something like Jellyfin or Plex, or you can use it as a companion to your Jellyfin server as a client. And they do play together very nicely. One of the great things about using it as a client is that you do not need to rely on proprietary devices such as Roku's, Amazon Fire Sticks, and so on. Now there are many different ways to get Kodi working on a device such as a Raspberry Pi. You can either download a Raspberry Pi OS and then install Kodi on top of that or you can download a distribution which has Kodi pre-installed and configured. And there are two or three main ones. I'm just going to show two here. There's OSMC which is built on top of Raspbian I believe. And then there's Libre Alec, which is a very minimal OS with Kodi installed on it. It just has enough OS for Kodi, which is their motto. Now, I like to use OSMC because I like to have a little more OS. There's other things I might want to do with that Raspberry Pi. And one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to get steam link working with Kodi as well so that we can play games from our pc and play them from our raspberry pi on any display that we plug this into around the house and because these are so inexpensive you could get one for every tv so that you can play your games on any tv in the house so to get Kodi working on your raspberry pi you can use the raspberry pi imager which you can find on the Raspberry Pi website. If you're on Arch or Manjaro, it's in the AUR. So we can go choose OS, and then here we can choose Libre Alec, but there's no option for OSMC. So you'll have to download that and then use, use this option here, which is use custom image and image, and image that to your SD card. So on the OSMC website, if this is the option you choose, disk images down here. So this is very important. If you have a Raspberry Pi 3, don't download the one for Raspberry Pi 1, because that's not going to work on a Raspberry Pi 2. Make sure you grab the one for your Raspberry Pi 2 and 3. Doesn't look like they've got one here for a Raspberry Pi 4 yet. So if you've got a Raspberry Pi 4 yet, if you've got a Raspberry Pi 4, you might have to use Libre Alec. I don't know. You might have to look into that yourself. So this is Kodi. As you can see, it uses a 10-foot user interface, which is intended for use from your couch, so that you can use your remote to navigate around it. And your TV remote should work, as long as it's plugged in via something like HDMI. Uh, but in some cases your TV remote will not work and you'll have to fall back to using the Kodi remote for like an and the Android app which is called Core and using the app to control it is actually easier than using the remote. Now whether your TV remote works, uh, your mileage may vary. Works on my TV here which is a Vion which is a brand you can get from one of the big box stores here in New Zealand. But my mum has the same brand, but she has the 4K version of this TV, and the remote does not play nice with Kodi, so she has to fall back to using the Android app. So, 
all the media I have here is actually on my Jellyfin server. I use the Jellyfin for Kodi app to sync my media across. And if I start watching something here, when I log into Jellyfin, um, I can actually resume playing from where I left off. So it sorts everything quite nicely. And this is pretty horrible to use with a mouse and keyboard. So we can go titles and this will organize it by shows. So we can go down to X files and gives episode descriptions. Now if you're using the Jellyfin for Kodi app, it will fetch all the thumbnails and information about the TV show from your Jellyfin server. Now if you're just using a NAS and you're not using Jellyfin at all, it will fetch the metadata from the internet for you as long as your TV shows and stuff are named correctly in such a way that it can use that to get the information. Another way to play your media from your Jellyfin server is if you set up your Jellyfin server as a DLNA server, you can actually should be able to come down here to videos and under here under media server, I mean under media sources, your DLNA servers should appear and as you see there's Jellyfin, Tux Foods Jellyfin server. So if I click on that, this will access my Jellyfin server via DLNA. The disadvantage of doing it that way is that there's a lot of menus to navigate and stuff. So it's better to use the app. That way your movies will appear in movies here on the menu and your TV shows will appear under TV shows and so on and so forth. So let's resume this. So changing our language, there's a lot of menus to go through to do it. There we go. I have found that um, for some users this can be quite complicated to navigate. So let's say I didn't want to watch this, I wanted to go back. It continues playing and this can be quite annoying. Some people are like, oh no, how do I stop that from playing? You want to come up here, you go back to full screen. You want to stop it and then come back to your main menu. So you can set up different profiles. So if we come up here to the off button, we can say log off master user. Then log on as this user. As you can see, there's nothing in the library, which is good because let's say you're setting up a library for your kids and there's probably things you don't want them watching. So you can set up their libraries, which ones they have access to manually. Now there are hundreds, maybe even thousands of add-ons for Kodi because this project's been around for a lot longer than a project like Jellyfin. Now Kodi can do PVR, so I got myself one of these. This will be for a separate video because Jellyfin can also do PVR and I want to compare them. So in a separate video, once I get this, I'll compare the PVR and live TV functionality of both of them. So now let's try to get the Steam Link working on that Raspberry Pi, which has OSMC on it because that will be a nice addition to Kodi on there. So the default username and password is OSMC. You'll have to enable SSH in the settings of OSMC. And then let's change that password. Okay, there we go. So there's this cool project which adds a Steam Link launcher for OSMC. Now this isn't for Libre Alec, unfortunately. I mean, you could try it. I don't think it'll work out of the box. There'll be some changes you'd have to make. So let's install Steam Link on the Raspberry Pi, which you can find in the Steam community forums under Steam Link general discussion, should be pinned. And copy link location. Now let's say wget, paste the link here. Now we wanna go sudo dpkg 
then give it the option I for install Steam Link. There we go. That's installed. Okay, so let's follow the this link and then go copy link location. <laughs> We actually have to install this Varkuti. So the Steam Link launcher should be in your home directory now. So to install it, you'll want to find the option in Kodi, which says install from zip. It should be an option to install from the zip file in your home directory. So install that. When you run it for the first time, you'll need a keyboard unfortunately to say yes to the prompts so you have to plug a keyboard into your raspberry pi or whichever device you decide to install kodi on and say yes to those prompts you'll only need it this one time and first time setup you'll have to give steam link permission to access your steam account it will try to detect running steam clients so make sure you've got steam running on your computer so you'll have to copy a four digit code across and then you'll be able to start steam in big picture mode make sure you plug your controllers into your raspberry pi not into your computer Although you can have one controller plugged into your computer and one plugged into your Raspberry Pi, some games will get confused by this, so if you can it's much better just to plug both your controllers or all your controllers into your Raspberry Pi. Now I'm running this over Cat5, I'm not using the wireless, and it runs very nicely. I don't notice any latency, and yeah, it's very playable. Although I think it's limited to 30 frames per second on the Raspberry Pi 3. I did my best to try to capture it. So the screen capture is from my desktop. And on the bottom right you can see that's running off my Raspberry Pi which has the controllers plugged into it. Now to go back to Kodi you want to go to the power off button and select stop remote play which will bring you back to the Steam Link menu. And from there you hit B, which will quit Steam Link, and that will revert back to the Kodi menu. So that was a brief look at Kodi. Now, Kodi can do a lot more. It's been around for a long time. There's lots of add-ons and skins. These days I prefer just to stick with Jellyfin. Some of the drawbacks of Kodi is some users find it hard to use. It's fine for people like me who are competent with technology, but some people find it very difficult to navigate around Kodi and use it. Opposed to something like Jellyfin, which has apps on like the Roku, and the Roku is very easy to use, and the Jellyfin app although it's very new, is also very, to use, very easy to use on the Roku. But the fact that you can also use a Raspberry Pi to run Kodi very smoothly, and the Raspberry Pi can do Steam Link, makes, makes Kodi pretty damn awesome together with Steam Link. And works well with Jellyfin, so I mean it's a great Jellyfin client if you don't plan to have anything else, like Netflix. Anyways, see you all later everyone. Have a good day.